What's going on there folks? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this beautiful Thursday, June 23rd date, 2022. About 12.50 p.m. California time, latest quake shows a 1.0 earthquake up into the Alaska region. This comes after uh, some movement here in the Big Island. I'm going to cover that activity first. Seeing uh, some threes pop up here on the Big Island. At least one three here within the last hour. This originally came in as a 3.8. I've seen that signature pop up pretty nicely on the seismograph stations there, the live seismograph there on the uh, Earthquake 3D stream. Right around the uh, Pahala area of the Big Island, looking at the all magnitudes here, seeing quite a bit of movement overnight within this region, getting a pretty good swarm of activity. Of course, this is all pretty typical uh, for the most part in the swarming areas around Pahala, uh, but we are noticing a trend of earthquake activity offshore uh, kind of stretching out there towards the, uh, a little bit off towards the uh, Lohi Seamount. Uh, nothing really going on in that area, but uh, definitely uh, looks like it may be trailing offshore here a little bit. Uh, the depths are a little bit more shallower as we get offshore. I've seen a couple uh, more uh, surface, not really surface, but they're not as deep as these other ones here around the southwestern uh, portion of Pahala. Either way, keeping an eye on it, it's definitely uh, showing some activity today in this area of the Big, Hi uh, Big Island, definitely lighten up in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, the movement uh, up around the Alaska region today, as we noted, a 1.0 or 1.1, uh, a couple of them up there, a couple small microquakes throughout the region of Anchorage, and a trail of activity along the Aleutian Trench. You guys see that? Nothing big going on here. Uh, in fact, uh, looks like there was, let's see what these are. I had a couple threes and some fours. A uh, little bit of it somewhat deep into the uh, subduction zone here of the North American and Pacific Plate subduction zone. Uh, but for, no, for now, just some, uh, some threes and fours kicking off there. Some movement around the Kuro Kamachaka Trench yesterday. This activity... Uh, kicking inland a little bit or a down dip i should say 35 kilometers for this 5.2 into the uh, curl kamchaka trench japan trench looks pretty quiet today uh philippine plate a little bit of movement on both sides of it here just a couple fours and also some activity scattered out and about throughout the indonesia area papua new guinea and also down into the uh Kermadec trench area tonga trench region seen a 514 kilometer deep 4.6 over here get if you notice we're definitely getting a spread out of activity all over the uh, area around here and that includes areas around afghanistan where we've seen that uh, deadly earthquake a couple days ago in that region of the uh, pakistan afghanistan border uh, today they're seeing a couple earthquakes a little bit further up north uh, some deeper movement into the mountain ranges of afghanistan some fours and some activity out uh, just around the uh, Himalaya Mountains. And way up here, looks like, in the desert, around China, 4.9, kicking off up there. Uh, still seeing some activity around the Iran area. This area did see some movement over the last few days or so and, and last couple weeks of s pretty much swarming activity of fours and fives within this region. Uh, today, 1.4.3, and again, that was yesterday, 6.22. Uh, UTC time so no new movement taking place there today uh, looks like the most recent quake in this area going to be down uh, off the coast of Yemen with a 4.6 into the uh, into this little gulf here Gulf of Aden what else we got uh, Atlantic Ocean showing some activity out there around the uh, southern mid-Atlantic Ridge once again South America, we've got some activity kicking up here around the central part of the Peru Chile Trench. Some deeper movement. Uh, latest quake shows a 4.6. Uh, what is that? San Antonio de los Cobres, Argentina. 4.6, 195 kilometers deep into the Peru Chile Trench here. Some deeper activity kicking up. Uh, Puerto Rico activity, not a whole lot going on. This area is kind of on the quiet side. In terms of normal background activity only nine earthquakes got one up here 
around the Mona Seamount last night, 3.3 at 21 kilometers. A uh, little activity, spotty activity throughout the Middle America Trench and the West Coast region. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in here to the Long Valley Super Volcano first. Let's see what we got going on out here. Getting a spread out of activity. As far as the individual swarm goes up here, um, haven't really seen too much of it. Uh, let's see, last one was uh, quite a while ago, actually, it looks like. It looks like last night sometime. So the swarm has somewhat actually died off completely here in this area. We did see some movement further south around the Bishop area and throughout the volcanic tablelands here in Southern California. But, uh, well, the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada here in Southern California. And um, just some spotty activity. Nothing major going on. Let me see 2.5 and above. We did have, looks like a 2.9 and a 2.5 within this area around Mount Tom, Round Valley area. Um, but for the most part, it looks like it's just kind of spreading out a little bit as far as the earthquake activity goes today. But we will continue to keep an eye on the Long Valley Swarm if it does kick back up. Uh, earthquake down here on the bend. See this little bend along the plate boundary? It's a little dangerous area. I should say a major dangerous area. It's kind of an intersection of some major faults. You got the Garlock Fault and the San Andreas Fault and a couple other fault systems here that kind of intermix and intertwine and interchange with, with each other here. Kind of got a uh, 1.3 around the Maricopa area of California. 1.3 at 10 kilometers. Just looks like it's right just off the San Andreas Fault Zone here. Kind of where that bend takes place. And some further activity down south off of the San Andreas Fault on some uh, other separate fault systems down here. But they're not, uh, not too active today. A little swarming down here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone north of the Borrego Springs area. Nothing going on around the Salton Sea area. Looks like 1.4 1, 1 yesterday. No swarms to report around the Salton Sea, which could be a good sign for now. One earthquake out here around the uh, uh, San Clemente Island. Bunch of faults out here. The San Cl I think this thing kind of extends way up there too. A 1.8. Let's go ahead and check that out real quick on the uh, let's see here, Southern California Data Center. It's a pretty cool site to check out some uh, uh, faults and their, their, uh, a little bit more information on them. Looks like this is a 210 kilometer length fault. Pretty lengthy. Uh, let's see here, nearby community, San Diego, 70 kilometers offshore. Uh, it looks like we have had some recent uh, earthquake activity doesn't really show when uh, slip rate roughly between 1.5 millimeters per year which ain't that big of a deal but who knows when the last um, full earthquake or full rupture was in that area definitely uh definitely could see some big ones out here it's just a matter of time this whole area is under the gun it's got to be under quite a bit of stress here there's that line of activity stretching up here north of the garlock fault shear zone once again Kind of rounds a bend up through this mountain range and up into Wyoming and Montana. Uh, let's see what we got over around Cedar, Utah. Still seeing some activity. Swarming kicking up here again. Swarms come and go in this area, and right now they're kind of they're kind of picking back up again. But not like we've seen over the past uh, a couple months ago. This area was seeing probably a good 30 or 40 earthquakes in a day. Now it's just kind of cut down a little bit. Uh, up around the Yellowstone area where they're opening up quite a few entrances I don't think they've opened up the northern end but uh, all other entrances here are opened so they're working on some sections up here around the northern end uh, looks like a little bit of activity kind of have to zoom in right really close to see these six earthquakes looks like a uh, largest one in 1.3 and I seen these on the map earlier let me go over here to the Yellowstone map real quick it's gonna be these earthquakes up here around the Maple Creek area see these See these little guys popping up here like popcorn there's good it looks like good seven or eight of them so they're they're pretty close today on the number they got six of them here again a 1.3 the largest at 1322 utc time 1322 is going to be right here 
That's going to be one of the larger ones. Not, not a big deal, not a big earthquake swarm. Definitely no large magnitudes taking place there at Yellowstone today. The rest of the park looks clear. I'm not seeing any type of swarming. No magma movement, folks, today. No doom and gloom on this Thursday. Just heat. A whole lot of heat. That's a fact. It's supposed to be up around 105 again today. And whew, I'm staying inside. I'm not even joking. It's going to be an all-day, inside-day type of day. And i got a lot of schoolwork to do, man. i have a lot. I don't know if anybody's took in summer classes before or not. But uh, here at the college where I'm going, they pack in a bunch of work into a very short amount of time. Um, and it's it's keeping me busy, let me tell you. I got uh, quite a few quizzes and whatnot and discussions to do before 5 o'clock. So it's 1 o'clock now. I got a few hours to get it done. All right. Earthquake activity around Texas, Pecos, Texas region. Seeing some movement. Pecos, a couple twos out there in the desert. Eastern part of the country looks pretty calm today, folks. As mentioned, most of the activity kind of pointing their arrows over here around this area of the world. Getting a, a good push of earthquake activity in this plate system, along these plate systems here in fault boundaries, all showing quite a bit of amplified activity today, including the Big Island. So we will watch it. I don't think we got anything to take note of here along the Big Island, but we will check out the hazard notification system here from the USGS um, on the HVO site. Looks like... Uh, Kilauea daily update. We'll check this out here. The summit eruption of the volcano uh, continued over the last 24 hours. All recent lava activity has been confined to the crater and current data indicate that this is a scenario is likely, likely to continue. We've seen this say that same thing for quite a while now. So it's it, this could go on and on and on and on or we could have further uh, escalations. But uh, right now they're, they just, they're just there. It's staying active. Uh, summit tilt meters began recording deflation around 8.30 last night. A sulfur dioxide emission rate of uh, approximately 2,100 uh, tons per day was measured on June 22nd. So that was yesterday. No unusual activity has been noted along the east rift zone for now or the southwest rift zone. Uh, steady rates of ground deformation and seismicity continue along both. No tremor episodes were observed over the past 24 hours. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty clear, right? Just... Uh, Kilauea out there doing their thing. doing The volcano's doing its thing, that's for sure. Uh, let's see what else we got. Tremor activity tonight, or last night I should say, was about 23 epicenters there. Mostly in the Oregon area. Kind of towards the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Just a little bit north there. Uh, Mount St. Helens, of course, continues to uh, pop off a little bit of microquake activity. We'll go ahead and check out the recorded seismogram here on the on the digital data give it a second and it should pop up here just one second folks one second here's the uh, activity here last night definitely really ramped up with a few earthquakes see these uh, popping up pretty nicely and I'm sure some of those are um, getting close to the one magnitude if not a little bit higher but uh, let's go over here to the all magnitudes map here again see what uh, See what the USGS has reported. Nothing. They claim nothing's going on here within the last 24 hours. So, And that goes for the same with the PNSN network. These guys aren't showing anything here from... Uh, well, they just got a point two, but that was that was an older earthquake from uh, even two days ago. The UTC time from previous two days ago. So, it is... What, what do I say? It is what it is, right? It's a week, day, no holiday. Maybe they just don't want to include it. They could be busy, guys. A lot going on up at Yellowstone with, you know, maybe getting a lot of the equipment back up and running. I know that some uh, instruments were damaged up there from the flooding events. That could be, uh, you know, water um, temperature monitors. It could be, uh, you know, gas emission monitors and stuff like that. So I'm sure they're busy. They got their hands full. But, uh Yep. Alrighty, what else we got here in the sun? Yep, <laughs> that's my wording to move on. Let's move on. A uh, little activity last night. It looks like some sea flare, sea flare activity kicking up here. Long duration sea flare. Uh, looking at the sunspots, these guys have not fixed their data yet. Looks like they're having some type of... Uh, uh, well, they did put out 
right here. Updated solar imagery courtesy of this, currently unavailable due to widespread power outage. Outage. So there's some issues going on here with this, with these two systems. Um, and now I, I still see a lot of folks saying that there's a huge, massive sunspot that's facing us. Well, that whole region has kind of just gone on now. That, that was that's like days old. Uh, if you look at some of the maps here, these this activity is just going away from us. Um, and behind the bin, there is a little bit of activity trying to develop, but not much at all. Not much at all. Uh, these two are kind of old. These images are old compared to the more recent images. I guess all we got to deal with right now is maybe some coronal hole solar wind stream coming at us. But as uh, far as the flare threat goes, I think this is a slightly overrated uh, event. But uh, we will keep an eye on it. Looking at the current solar flare activity. Of course, last night we did see a, just a little bit long duration sea flare. I, I don't believe that was pointing at us. C1.1. Uh, I think it was a little bit higher than that. They got maximum C1.1 here, but looking at the chart, that could have been away from us. <clears throat> it could have been a far side um, flare. But uh, things are kind of calming down here on the sun right now. Uh, just We go through these little stages, and uh, I think that's what we have to look forward to right now. Just some, some uh, non-elevated solar activity for the next couple days all right guys i'm gonna get started on the school work and uh there's a lot I'm taking up quite a few classes and uh and it's uh of course it's all of my interest anthropology and stuff like that geology um some good stuff that uh will help me throughout my life in terms of knowledge and whatnot so i'm gonna work on that and get busy i got like i said i got four hours to do a whole bunch of stuff so We'll chat you guys a little bit later on. If something does happen, of course, I can put that on hold and pop in here with an update if anything does decide to, uh, uh, you know, make a newsworthy event today. Stay safe, guys. We'll chat you later and stay cool. Peace out.